Hey guys, Brian here with the uh, Coastal Patrol Cub, uh, and I thought it'd be fun to do a little video today, um, just kind of talking about the Cub in general and and explaining a little bit about uh, what the airplane is, what I have here, and kind of how everything got started here with the with the Coastal Patrol Cub. So. Um, Airplane here is a 1946 Piper J3 Cub, uh, J365. Um, so it was originally outfitted with a Continental A65, uh, 65 horse uh, motor. This particular airplane, again, built in 1946, metal spar wing uh, for those of you who are familiar, but uh, a very standard kind of typical J3 Cub. Um, this particular airplane was uh, completely rebuilt in 1984. Um, at that point, it was swapped out for a Continental uh, C85, 85 horse po uh, horsepower motor, um, as well as some other modifications as I, I kind of go around that I'll, I'll point out. Um, was basically uh, like that for a number of years, and then in 2023, underwent a partial restoration um, the uh, motor was given a top end overhaul and the interior was redone as well as some other minor modifications to the outside. Uh, covering fabric uh, uh, paint, all that is still 1984 vintage, still in pretty good shape. Um, I tell people it's a good 20 footer. Uh, as you get up close to it, you can see it was stored, um, covered uh, for ever since restoration. However, did get a fair amount of bird poop in various places and, and those stains kind of um i am planning on recovering it here before too terrible long uh but for right now everything is is kind of good to go i've done a thorough inspection of the fuselage from the inside uh and that sort of thing um so the covering itself structurally in great shape you know the fabric is in in really good shape uh you know paint's just not 100 percent. but uh i digress um, so we'll kind of go uh, take a look here. I'll point out a couple of things that are kind of non-standard. Um, for one, you can see we here we've got the, the wheel pants, which I quite like. Um, apparently there are some folks out there who are not as big of a fan of wheel pants, but I, I really like them. Uh, and then the first kind of thing that kind of jumps out to people who know Cubs, I think, is the, uh, the bungee covers. So for those of you who are not familiar with how a Cub landing gear works, uh, inside those metal fairings there, are, are basically two opposed forks with, with big bungees on them and that provides the suspension, the, the spring, if you will, of your, your landing gear. On a normal Cub, that is a kind of leather or fabric, just black uh, cover. Previous owner to us put on these, these kind of fairing style covers, so that's obviously not original, a little non-standard, but it, look, it looks cool. Um, and then, of course, we got the, the C85 motor, as I mentioned. Still no starter on this motor. It can be outfitted with a starter, uh, but this one is not, uh, which I actually prefer. Uh, I, I, these airplanes don't have a lot of useful load as it is, and I'm more than happy to just hand start the, uh, the engine to save a few pounds on the, uh, on the starter. Um, and then, uh, of course, a metal prop, which, again, would have not been standard for... A cub of this vintage but or any vintage really would have all come with with wood props but uh, we got the metal prop on there so between the 85 horse motor and the metal prop uh, which is a little bit easier to spin than the uh than the wood this thing has has plenty of pep plenty of get up and go which is nice um moving up here uh so fuel normally you've got the uh the float style um fuel cap on there with the with the wire fuel gauge i have one and just when i'm not flying i put on just a, a straight fuel cap to help prevent some evaporation. Um, one of the things, we also have an eight gallon auxiliary wing tank. You can see the filler up there. Most of the time I fly with it empty. I, I don't typically need, but it's there if we want it. And uh, when I go to the interior, I'll show you where the uh, fuel cock is for, for draining that. That eight gallon wing tank just drains down into the main tank here in the nose. Uh, and everything burns straight from that tank. So typically what I'll do if I am using the aux tank is, you know, fly for a while and, you know, get down to, uh, you know, once I'm getting down to a quarter tank or so left in the, uh, in the main, then I'll open up the drain and drain all of that down into the, uh, into the main. It's an eight gallon tank in the wing, but truly it's only about seven gallons of that will actually 
is actually usable and they'll drain out the other the other gallon stays in there um anyway other than that x from the external it's it's pretty much all standard cub oh and we also have a, a vhf antenna installed again when i redo the cub here in a few years uh within the next few years i'm planning on hiding that that vhf antenna inside the tail uh doing it that way but that's where it is right now um Another thing that obviously jumps out on the cub, we got the, the Civil Air Patrol markings on the on the side and also on both wings. Um, kind of how a lot of this came to be. So we bought the cub. Uh, it was myself and a partner. I've since bought him out of his half. Uh, but when we originally bought it, it's like, okay, you know, like most other cubs out there, we've got this nice yellow airplane with the black lightning bolt. Um, but I kind of like to set it apart a little bit, right? While well, still staying original. Uh, I'm a longtime Civil Air Patrol member. I was a, a cadet when I was in high school, and I'm a senior member now. And I thought, hey, CAP used to fly Cubs, and I found uh, a good image of um, a Civil Air Patrol Cub in, in the appropriate markings and and copied that, and we, we slapped it on there. And, um, yeah, that's, things have just kind of taken off from there. So, uh, and the markings that we have, they're just uh, vinyl stickers that I got made up and 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 just on there uh so nothing crazy there uh standard two-seater uh and then for those of you who are not familiar with cubs but yeah this is as much instrumentation as you get you got your uh airspeed there on the far left and then tachometer compass uh inclinometer i think is the official term for the ball uh altimeter and then your oil per, uh yeah altimeter and then oil pressure and oil temperature gauges but other than that pretty well it you got your cabin heat over there also known as the passenger's foot warmer got your uh primer there down here on this side you've got your carb heat and go ahead and push that in then over here throttle for the front seat back seat fuel cut off and trim got uh, rudder pedals, heel brakes, which I actually quite like. You know, heel brakes are not very common in modern aircraft, but uh, I have gigantic feet. I wear size 15s, um, and I have a problem riding the brakes with toe brakes sometimes just because my long feet like to hang out on the top there. So I quite like heel brakes, actually. Um, I got the front stick removed right now for some work I was doing, but uh, obviously you'd normally have a control stick up there. And then uh, we got this Trig uh, seat back comm setup from Pine Gar Aviation. I'll do a separate video talking about that little setup. That's pretty cool. Um, and then that's just our antenna line as well as it's just taped up there for right now. I'm going to do something cleaner with that later, but that's my uh, GPS puck that goes back in the uh, cargo compartment there. I've got my my GPS puck and then uh, uh, ELT, which that's something else. It's just a uh, old, you know, 121.5 ELT. I would really like to get a 406 beacon at some point, um, but obviously they're fairly expensive. So that'll be a change later. I know some people are all about like, oh, hey, you can keep the 121.5. Um, again, as a Civil Air Patrol member, I can tell you uh, if I were to ever go down in an airplane, I would greatly prefer having a 406 beacon to a old 121.5 ELT here um, you'll be found much 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 quicker with a 406 beacon so I think that's a good safety update to make and along with safety updates to make again I've only had this airplane for about eight months now um, I don't have shoulder harnesses yet but I definitely plan to get them of course that not original to the airplane uh, but again, if you're talking uh, safety improvements, I think shoulder harnesses are frankly a no-brainer. I'm just, uh, I was actually just researching the other night, figuring out what ones I want to buy. And probably when I come to do my next annual here in April, I'm looking at uh, probably having those installed. So that is pretty well it. Um, oh, last thing I forgot to talk, talk about because I don't have it on right now. I'll come over here. The bomb. <laughs> so I'll probably do a separate video all about this too. And you can see I just haven't taken off right now. Um, this is kind of version one. This is almost all 3D printed. The only exception of, is this um, body tube is actually a piece of eight inch, eight inch HVAC ducting. 
Uh, but other than that, uh, almost entirely 3D printed. And then uh, custom built the hanger there. This is cork board with magnets in it. And it sticks up to the bottom of the airplane with magnets. That is strictly ground display only right now. In fact, those the setup that I have right now will barely hold it even on the ground. Um, I have designs for something better uh, coming later, so I'll probably do a separate video for you know showing this bomb, and then when I build the uh, next replica bomb, um, to to show the differences and how much hopefully better. The the two things that uh, I'm a few things I'm going to change. So again, I'll I'll do a later video that'll show it actually on the airplane, but it it hooks up basically on. Just, just below the pilot here, just aft of the left uh, landing gear. And you'll see pictures of that on my various socials. Um, but <clears throat> this is a exact one-to-one -one replica of an AM-M30 100 pound general purpose bomb. And this is one of the bombs that the Civil Air Patrol would have been flying coastal patrol with in World War II. So, Again, this is a post-World War II aircraft. However, obviously the Piper Cub design did not change uh, really at all in that time. And once I got it marked up with the Civil Air Patrol markings and I started doing some other things, it, it got pretty popular. And I decided, um, hey, what a great way to try and showcase some really unique history of what the Civil Air Patrol did in World War II. And so I you know, kind of used that to um, start talking about the Coastal Patrol in World War II and, and kind of highlighting that. Along those lines, um, yes, Civil Air Patrol flew Coastal Patrol in World War II. Yes, a lot of the airplanes were armed. Again, this was one of the bombs they would have used. Um, they would have used these uh, 150, or excuse me, 100 pound bombs, 250 pound general purpose bombs, and 325 pound depth charges were the three various munitions that they employed. Um, so yes, Civil Air Patrol flew Coastal Patrol, they flew armed, and there was one Piper Cub that participated in Coastal Patrol out of North Carolina. However, comma, um, I do not know one way or another whether that Cub was ever armed. I do know airplanes of similar size, like they, there was a lot of Stinsons uh, that flew Coastal Patrol and those were armed. Um, at least some of them were armed, so it is feasible. I do not have any concrete evidence one way or another whether North Carolina ever, um, whether the North Carolina wing ever armed that cub or not. I suspect actually probably not, and I'll go into those details in my separate video on the bomb, uh, but it's possible, right? So, so I'm putting myself in the realm of, uh, when you talk historical accuracy, am I 100% no? Because again, this is a post-war post -war, uh, aircraft. Um, I don't know whether one was ever armed, that sort of thing, right? So, and there's obviously my, my airplane's not, even for its vintage that it is, it's not 100% original, right? Um, so am I 100% historically accurate? No. However, do I think I can still prompt that conversation and still educate folks about what Civil Air Patrol did during World War II um, and the results of that action, yeah, I think this, this serves as a pretty good uh, jumping off point. And when people, you know, see a, uh, you know, kind of a non-standard cub with these, you know, military style markings and a bomb hanging off the bottom of it, you know, that certainly prompts second looks and, and prompts conversations, which is really what I aim to do. Um, and, uh, you know, part of that too, uh, is I've also got myself a, um, I set up a World War II vintage, uh, Civil Air Patrol uniform and, and, you know, so I can fly around in, in the Civil Air Patrol uniform that's representative of that era as well. And again, just kind of, kind of show off what, what we did to, to win the war on the home front. So, um, so yeah, so that is. That is what I got. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments. And again, uh, hope to post some more videos soon.